What's going on guys, Liam here and it's time to go over round 23 of the 2023 NRL season and god damn it was a good one. That eight, that race for the eight, it's getting tight man, it's getting tight. Now I apologise in advance, I am chronically hungover. But the show must go on man, I love you guys so much, I'm doing this anyway man, but I am rough, rough. About nine too many whiskeys last night. God damn it. It was uh, not a good time this morning. God damn. Um, all right. So we'll go through all the games, guys. We'll have a peek at the ladder. We'll go over all the games individually in a bit more depth and all that sort of good stuff. And um, let's get into this thing. And just before we do, quickly, just realize, man, we're closing in on 2,500 subs, man. Thank you, everyone that's subbed so far. And um, yeah, you're all legends. You're all legends. That's why I'm here hungover talking to you about rugby league. And let's see if we can get this bad boy to 3,000 before the end of the year. How good would that be? 3,000 subs in my first year? It'd be awesome, man. Awesome. All right. So, Thursday night. <laughs> Deep breath. <laughs> Deep breath. Uh, Roosters defeat the Seagulls. And I'm putting a big old red line through them, making the eight from that game. Um, Wires get it done against the Titans. Penrith just drown. It's probably the best words. The storm. Broncos get it done against the Cowboys. Got a lot to say about that one. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that game. Um, Knights squeak home against the Dolphins. Sharkies get the dub. How good. I did, they were on a skid, man. It was, uh, it was good. Got a bit to say about that one too. And then Parramatta uh, unconvincingly beat the Dragons. And then talk about unconvincingly win winning. Raiders. I'd hate to be a Raiders fan. I'd, I just wouldn't. I mean, it's it's it's, it's so weird saying that that this because they're sitting in fifth, like equal with the Melbourne Storm. But it's just frustrating to watch. It's just so frustrating because you know they could be better, and it's just yeah, it's just, it's bizarre. But again, like they're, they're fifth, like you know, it's uh, what do you do? They're, yeah. Anyway. All right, let's have a look at the eights, guys. It's um, it's taken shape now, guys. It's um, top four. I reckon that might how it might sit. We'll have to wait and see, but that looks that looks pretty damn set to me. What do you guys reckon? Um, and then fifth to eighth, we have Raiders, Sharkies, Knights, and so Sharkies really needed that win. So really solid win from them. Um, Knights, look at that, up into seventh. What were they? Thirteenth not long ago. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, this is um, absolutely brilliant. And, yeah, I've got a bit to say about that though, because I don't know. There's, there's, we'll have to see, because yeah, well, I'll, I'll get into that. I'll get into that. And then Bunny's just out of sorts. Para jump up into ninth, and Cowboys, like I said, they were seventh. They slipped down to tenth. It's uh, it's tough. And um, they've got the bye next week, and could not come at a better time. Maybe last week's where they could have uh, been fresh for the Broncos game, but um, yeah, they they need a buy. Uh, they need a buy for sure. And Seagulls, like I said, I'm running the red line through them for a couple of reasons. I just don't think they're playing better than... I don't think they're playing like a top eight team. They, they've got... They're having games where they look like a top four team and then they're just awful. And they got the Penrith this week and uh, they lose that. They, they're obviously, like, I know mathematically, obviously, they can still make it. But, yeah, I think, I think the Panthers will get it done pretty comfortably against them next week. And that will pretty much even... Rule them out mathematically. Well, maybe not technically mathematically, but they're going to make it almost impossible. Mm. And, um, yeah, it's funny old one, the, the the ladder at the moment. Like, I remember when Cowboys were down here and they were making their big run-up, and I sort of said, um, well, I don't think they can make the eight because all the top eight teams, so Parra was in there and um, who else? So Parra was in there, Knights are out. And I was like, everyone in the top eight's playing brilliant. So they're all on the up. Now I feel like Penrith and the Broncos are the only... Or Penrith, Broncos and Wars are the only teams that are really genuinely, like, sort of, like, getting better, winning the games they should win, you know, like, winning the... You know, like, they're, they're, I feel like they're the three teams that are, like, just looking... Not flawless, just, like, really, really good. And I feel like pretty much everyone from here to here has just been stumbling and, you know, looking great and then stumble and tripping over a little and then this, that and the other. But, yeah, I, I really do feel like these three have really come out of the pack and that's why this bottom eight has just become so crazy and anything could happen, you know? Anything could happen for real, man. It's um, 
Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right, let's get into Seagulls versus Roosters. Now, um, this is a bit of a funny one. I remember, I just got to look at my notes. So I have to look at my notes on my Thursday night games because I forget what happened. I forget what happens, but I pretty much knew the Roosters. I tipped Manly. I thought they were... I thought they were just... Oh, Roosters just haven't been that damn good. I was like, I thought that the Manly, with the final spot on the line, be able to get the job done. But when um, when Matt Lodge went down, they were they were down so many middles anyway. I just was like, ah, oh, no, nah, they're, they're just they're missing too much. I mean, they're, they're like Aaron Woods and Bullimore come on and just yeah, like uh, Woods just come on gives his token two or three penalties and Bullimore, uh, yeah, I. Uh, to me, he's a good reserve grade player. I, I don't rate him that highly. And simply, you know, like you, when, when you that's your strike power is uh, simply. I mean, you know, then you got Lindsay Collins, and Brandon Smith, Jared Ray Hargraves. Um, oh, I like this Guang guy. He was uh, he was pretty handy. Uh, Victor Radley and stuff like that. It was just yeah, it was it, the meters started rolling through. And you know, if we have a look at the meters, I. Oh, they didn't win it by dramatically, but they definitely still won the battle through the middle there. Plenty more meters per set, sort of thing, and that's where I thought sort of felt like I felt like they were just rolling through a bit better. And um, yeah, it was it's good to see Joey Manu good. Man, I was actually really impressed with this Billy Smith dude. I thought he was like he was. I remember people were like sort of laughing at him when he came into the league, and he, he was pretty damn good. And I reckon this kid here, he's going to be pretty damn good as well. And god damn, Nathan Brown send off. That was. Um, Simbin, maybe? I don't know. I didn't see much in that, but I mean, pretty poor from the, the Seagulls. I mean, final spot on the line. Pretty much gone if you don't if you don't win this game, because you've got Penrith next week, and then there's, what, two or three games left. Yeah, it was a pretty damn poor performance. Um, I don't know what's happened. Jakey's just been given penalties in six agains, left, right, and centre too, so um, we'll have a quick look at the player stats quickly. I mean, not much really to write home about here, to be honest, from the Seagulls. I mean, it's just, it's just there's just not much going on here. No one ran for big meters. No one really jumped off the stat sheet at all, to be honest. Uh, Roosters, um, yeah, like I said, this Billy Smith guy, I mean, you know, 127 meters for a center, solid, but, you know, like one line break, two line break assist, try assist, that's brilliant. Tedesco, one line break, one line break assist, one try, six, six tackle busts. Joey Manu, goddamn, 10 tackle busts, 155 meters, and <sighs> told to Robbo, man. Suwali on the wing, look at these numbers, man. Come on, bro, 194 meters. 50 post contact and a line break that's what you want that's what you want all right so we'll have a look at there i mean completion rate was solid from the seagulls i mean again not great from the roosters um people were saying how good they looked in this game i didn't think they looked great um i, I don't know i just thought they were good enough to get the win uh six line breaks to three um won the average set distance really won the ruck to really really fast play the balls um what else we got here? I mean, they defended but defended better, I guess. Missed tackles, literally identical, 34 each. Errors, 11 to 9. And um, penalties conceded. Look at that. 15. God damn. How do you lose that, Manly? Wow, that is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And obviously the send-off, too. Um, but, yeah, it, was, uh, yeah it, was, it wasn't the greatest game in the world. But it was, it was good to see, you know, guys, that like Billy Smith and... Yeah, Suwali, he do his thing, it was always good, and Schuster, man, I don't know, bro, like, the thing that pisses me off about this, and as soon as I saw it, he did this, the most brilliant chip, and ch like, chip through and score a try, he did so many arsey things in this game, but I know they're going to show that highlight all year, they're going to show it at the start of next year, all through next year, about how brilliant it was, but he was straight ass in this game, like... I don't know, man. I, I just I am not on that bandwagon even a little bit. Like he's he's a I think he'd be a good lock, good edge row, whatever. But he's just like he just does he know? How, like I don't know. I just he just looks. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just I, to me it was such a poor performance from him, and then uh, like that chip and strap, it was so brilliant. But I know that like like. It's just not good enough, man. I, I don't know. Like, it's to me, he's just not that sick. And Brooks has come to the team, and obviously, I think he could slot in somewhere else because yeah, I really, really don't like him. At, like as a playmaker or whatever. It's just, just run the ball, bro. Like, run the ball, man. Like, 
thing is, if you run the, if you, um, all the good playmakers do, like especially in the six, not so much seven, but six definitely. If if you just run the ball, your ball playing will open up because people will just back off you that little second because they're not sure if you're going to run. It's so like everyone goes, oh, um, you know, he's so good. I I don't know about you, but I can sit there and I can tell you every time. Like to me, it's so telegraphed whenever he's going to play flat or play out the back. I'm like out the back, uh, throws it out the back. He's going to play flat, plays flat. Like it's so obvious what he's doing. Like it's so telegraphed because he doesn't he doesn't run. I'm just like, well, he's he's getting the ball on a sweep. He's going to throw it out the back. It's just so easy to read. Um, and if I can read it, God damn, I'm pretty sure their opposition defense can do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hence the, you know, that 16 penalty. What is it? 14 penalties and only scored what three tries and three, all three are at the end. You know, like these are just desperation tries. They weren't really in it. So, pretty disappointing. So, pretty disappointing for both teams for the rest for the year, to be honest. But I mean, what do you do? You you, ha- you have bum seasons. It does happen. I mean, Parramatta are in the same boat. Really, I, we'll, we'll get to them, but let's get to the next one. Let's not waste our time on that one too much. Let's keep it positive. Speaking of positive, goddamn Sean Johnson, what a career resurrection. I reckon he sh- should be pretty damn close to Will on that Daly M, man. I mean, goal kicking's great. Try assist numbers are great. Scoring tries like a freak. Um, backing up, effort plays, all that stuff. He's just been absolutely brilliant. Um Absolutely brilliant. Now, I want to give the uh, Titans a huge rap here. Tino goes down. Follow Waker gets Simbin in the 16th minute. And they made a really good game of this, man. They made a really good day in the game of this. And I genuinely think that Titans this year can really hold their head high. I thought they gave it a lot. I just think they've been outgunned a little bit um, overall. Um, you know, just losing games to better teams, I guess you could say. But always, man... Go down swinging and you can hold. You walk off the field with your head high, and I really feel like they do, man. Like losing your your two best forwards, essentially, or maybe for feeder for him. So two of your three best forwards, and you against a red hot Warriors team, and you you know you go down by ten points. I think oh, that's a pretty brave effort, man. So, um, oh, man, gr- Jaden Campbell, man, absolute freak. I'm absolutely loving everything he does, eh? Um, but yeah, it was it was good and. I mean, some of these. Like, I just really like. I mean, look at the, look at these numbers, man. Oops. Yeah, it's just um, it's pretty crazy what they do. I mean, Sean Johnson. I mean, sixteen points scored. Um, thirteen runs for ninety six meters. That's perfect for a number set for a seven. You know, you want to take a line on a bit. You know, you, like I said, you run a little bit and the. Your ball playing will open up a bit, and you know I think that's perfect. Yeah, that tw- you know between ten and fourteen runs for a half, ninety six meters. You know what I mean, and then all this opens up, and then you get two line breaks, line break assist, and two try assist. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Uh, Fnuel Blake was brilliant. Um, Mitch Barnett, and I-, I love they're just all chipping in a nice amount. Like Fnuel Blake, one sixty nine meters. Um, Barnett. Um, 153, Jackson Ford 158, and, and Torrey Harris 142, just no, not relying on one player, nice and balanced absolutely brilliant, so really good job from the Wars, F- far from perfect but they've had better wins this year obviously, but um, you can't win them all by a million points sort of thing, and um, where is he? Where is he? Um, where is he? Where's Campbell Graham? I mean, oh, there he is, Jaden Campbell, sorry. Campbell Graham, 258 running metres. The smallest guy in the NRL. God damn, look at these numbers, man. That's absurd. 250 running metres, 31 um, kick return metres, 39 post contact, one line break, one try assist, six tackle breaks. I was really worried about his size because he's so little and, like, his dad, like, back in the day, you could re- you could really get away with being a l- really small fullback and now it's really hard. You even see a guy like Clint Gutherson's size, who's a bit bigger than Jaden, he gets ragdolled a lot, you know what I mean? Like, most fullbacks now, you know, that Turbo's, like, what, well over 100 kilos, 6'4", six 6'5", foot six foot the trail's massive, you know, like, I mean, um, Joey Marnie when he played, you know what I mean? Even, like, Teddy, he's, you know, he's built, you know, and... Um, same as Edwards even, you know, they've got big legs and they're thick and all that sort of stuff. I, I really thought that small fullback was dead. But Jaden Campbell, man, and he get he get 
gets thrown around a little bit, but he, he, he's got this real, he just finds the seams, and he even when he gets grabbed hard, he, so, he just sort of moves his body so he doesn't get like fully smacked around and stuff like that. He's pretty damn brilliant, man. It's um, he's special, man. Like, he's special, and I mean, just filling in. I mean, <laughs> your backup fullback comes in and runs for 258. <laughs> How good. What a freak. Absolute freak, man. It's good to see the Campbell name live on in rugby league. How good. Um, yeah, so uh, like I said, look at this from the Titans. Brilliant. 86. This was over 90% for most of the game. Threw the ball around a little bit at the end to try and, um, you know, obviously close the gap a little bit on the scoreboard. So an error or two crept into their game, but absolutely brilliant. Um, Warriors obviously need to tidy this up if they want to be a genuine premiership threat, but look at that. Eight. 1,800 metres, that, that'll get it done. They, re, they literally won every stat, as you can see here. So seven line breaks, 41 tackle breaks, average set distance of 44, that's great. It'd be nice if you can keep get this a little bit below 40 if you can, restrict their metres a little bit. Um, play the ball speeds was even. Uh, what else we got? Anything else that really jumps off here? I mean, tackle efficiency, not brilliant, so but not bad either, 86%. And... Uh, 41 missed tackles to the Titans to 35 for the Wars, but that, it's not not bad at all. Uh, but yeah, again, just just you know, tidy those errors up a little bit. Yeah, they'll, they'll be just fine. Uh, penalties conceded 6 to 5. So yeah, good good from the Warriors. Come over, get the two points, go home. Good on you. You know, it's definitely not their best performance, but yeah, they, they get it done. <sighs> Storm versus the Panthers. Uh, I was really. Oh, what a shit. What a bad weekend for superstars being out. I'm bummed, man. I was really looking forward to see Jerome Hughes in. And who was the other one that went out? Can't remember. I will in a minute, though. But, um, but yeah, it was uh, really looking forward to this at full strength um, sort of thing. But Pezzett's pretty damn solid. But, oh, Coates was the other one. That's right. Um, George Jennings ended up going off, I believe, as well. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a strange old one, but... Penrith are so good, man. They're so good. They're, they're ridiculously good. Um, I think they got better than last year as a team. Obviously, don't have the strike. I thought I said this the other day on my TikTok. Can you imagine if Penrith still had Matt Burton, kick out, and Abby Coruscant on this team? But having said that, I think Mitch Kenny, even though he's nowhere near the skill level of Abby, I sort of think he... I sort of think he suits their style anyway. Like, like he's a rock in defense, and Appy can miss a tackle. Um, it's just like it's like having another middle forward. Like he he put he stops blow he stops props in their tracks. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a he's an absolute freak. Um, yeah, I mean this 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 four pack right here. I mean I mean I put Moses Leota on here obviously, but this is one of the best I've ever seen lace them up, for real. It's just a really nice balance of speed, power, tackle efficiency, post-contact, fast play, like everything. It's just, it's just great. Like Mitch Kenny, like I said, he's not the craftiest hooker, but he just gives good service and tackles his ring off, and that'll do it, man. That'll do it. Like, I sort of said this to someone the other day. I said, um, Penrith don't try and go at you. Like, you, you watch a team like the Broncos or Cowboys or... Um, yeah, Broncos and Cowboys are a good example. They, they almost try and score a try every time they have the ball. Penrith don't. Penrith might only have four or five proper raids in a half, but you know what I mean? They'll capitalise on two or three of them, and then all of a sudden, you know, they score 26 points. The other team doesn't look like scoring tries, and it's they, they win the game 13+, plus, you know, 26-6, to six, or last week against um, Cronulla, same thing. You know, they, they, they could have easily put up more bombs attacking, but they just, no, nah, field position, field position, boom, boom, boom. We'll get three or four good attacking raids a half. We'll probably score on two of them. Boom, boom, boom. 28 nil there. See you later. Thanks for coming. Um, absolutely, absolutely scary. And um, I say this with all due respect to everyone else in the top eight, and I'm not saying it like you suck, but, like, good luck to anyone playing them in the finals. And I, I mean that, like, coming from a... You know, like, I, I mean it like it's a nice thing. Like, good luck, because, like, you're going to need a little bit of it, because they're just, Jesus Christ, it's um, it's scary. Pray it's raining, because uh, in, in the dry. All right, so, um, we, like I said, Trent Robertson was listening to my YouTube videos the other day, and obviously Craig Bellamy did too, and uh, he chucked Nelson on the bench. I thought they were definitely missing strike off there. 
Um, but then he put eyes and hoof in the second row. I would like Katara in there, but um, it, it helped. It definitely helped um, having Nelson come on, but it just Penrith was stu- they just handled it against a lesser team. I think it probably would have worked a bit better, but yeah, they Nelson came on and he had a bit of impact, but it just it just didn't worry Penrith. Um, yeah, I'm sure if they were playing like a, a Manly or a Pet. Um, Para or something like that, it would have completely changed the game, or at least changed the flow of the game. But yeah, Penrith has handled him so well, and I mean he caused them a little bit of trouble, but nothing crazy. So absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Nathan Cleary is just, I'm so excited to see what he's like when he's like 29, 30 years old, because that's when halves are at their prime. It's uh, it's scary. He's so good already. It's ridiculous. Um. All right. So. Melbourne, we'll have a look at their stats real quick, but from memory, nothing crazy jumping out at us. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, this is, yeah, like I said, just a nice spread here, nothing crazy as far as the stats go. Um, Tonham Apeya had a pretty good one. What is it? Two line breaks, two, two line break assists, but Penrith... Penrith for me when they're defending as well. It's like Penrith are the only team, and this isn't a bad thing for every other team, but let's say you get a penalty or whatever and you have a full set of six and Penrith are defending their line and you've got the ball on the 10-meter line. Penrith the only team where I think that the other the team with the ball is probably not going to score a try. Like, I'm, I'm extremely confident they'll hold them out. Even if, say, Broncos have really good defense or Waz have had really good defense and, you know, like some of the other good defendish, defensive teams, I, there's still a very good chance. Like, a, a good attacking team will, will, will score a try against a pretty good defensive team. With Penrith, I just sit there and I'm like, yeah, they're probably not going to score against them. <laughs> you know? it's, 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 it's a war, man. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, we'll have a look at some of Penrith boys' stats. Um, here we go. Um, yeah, I thought, uh, geez, just going through the list. Tarub is, man, he's become one of my favourite players. Eh? It's uh, a bit of spice came into this game too, but... Yeah, Nathan Cleary, I mean, again, similar, similar-ish numbers to uh, Johnson, you know, just, we actually had quite a few more runs, 18 runs, 111, um, 111 run metres, two line break assists, two try assists, freaky two tackle breaks, and uh, honestly, we could be witnessing the GOAT, man. He, uh, people laugh at me when I say that, that Nathan, but people don't realise how, how much better you get as a... Like to, I've explained this to people like when like right now Nathan Cleary is just downloading data like uh, when you're a younger half that's almost what you're doing like you watch like you watch Thurston man all those every not every ninety eight percent of of Jonathan Thurston's highlight reel happened from age thirty on like it really did like you know he, he I wouldn't say he's terrible but he was he was oh, actually was pretty damn good in his twenties too but like. Whenever Thurston had the ball in his thirties, it was like he had extra time. It was just it's it's a weird thing, but yeah, it's just it's it's when you're a half and you've been in every single situation a game can possibly throw at you. Like you've been up by twenty, you know what to do. You've been down by twenty, you know what to do. You've been, you know what I mean. You, you're making a comeback. A team's making a comeback. You, once you've been in every single situation, you know exactly what to do in all of them. You have heaps of experience in every single rugby league situation. That's when a half really shines. And I remember when I saw Nathan Cleary playing for the first time. It was like his fourth or fifth game or something like that. I remember watching him and going. How is it this kid's fifth game? And I actually said to him, mate, I said, I reckon this kid could be the greatest footballer, um, halfback of all time, and everyone laughed. And that's still not necessarily going to be the case. It still could be a her- ter- like a disgustingly bad call. Um, but, yeah, it was, I just couldn't believe... I'd never seen... A, 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 was he eight, just turned 18? Can, like, with so much, like... It looked like he'd been playing for five, ten years. Like, like to me, like I watched players like you know Sam Walker and Lachlan Ilias and all these sort of guys now who have got you know two, three years under their belt. You know, like still very young, still learning their craft. You know, no one really gives them a hard time because they're still learning. I honestly think that Nathan Clear in his first five or six games was better than those guys. You know, two, three years into their careers, and they're you know the next big up and coming halfbacks. It's um. He's special, man. It's absolutely special. Uh, Toto again, 204 metres. I mean, 72 post contact, two line breaks, line break assist, four tackle busts. He's a freak, man. And um, 
Moses Leota, man. I want. I, I, I just love this dude, man. Like he's. He. He never gets the. He never gets the like the props of a Payne Haas or a Tina or anything like that. And and I think the main reasons why is it's the way Nathan Cleary plays him, but it's perfect. What you get when you get with Moses Leota is you get quality. I really feel like he's got a lot of the errors and the dumb penalties out of his game. He used to drop a ball here and there, but he just runs and plays so hard it's just gonna happen. But I mean, look at this. Thirty nine minutes. He only played thirty nine minutes. You know what I'm saying? And um oops. I hate when this does. I hate the NRL website. You know what I mean? And like, if you if you didn't if you looked at his stats, because this is so many people go to me. Oh, you know, Moses, I remember last year when I compa compared Payne Haas to Moses Leota, and I was like, which one's better? Um, people are like, oh, he only runs for like 130 meters, or you know, no. bruh, he played 39 minutes and he gave you 126 meters with 56 post contact. That is ridiculous. Half the time his meters aren't ridiculous because he's he's getting play. He comes on and he plays intense, and I I actually would rather thirty nine intense minutes than seventy. So for example, when we get to Payne Haas in a few games time or next game, he ran for like two hundred, but he was on the field for sixty nine. Again, n not taking anything away from Payne Haas, absolutely brilliant. But if Moses Leota played for that many minutes, he's he would have been pretty damn close to two hundred as well. Um, Absolutely absurd. This dude is a freak, man. I, I, I thought Fisher Harris, I mean, Fisher Harris, 199 metres. Jesus Christ. Like, he's just, how many minutes did he play? 52. So there you go. That's just, yeah, but I, Ivan Cleary understands, obviously. I mean, I was a bit critical of Kevin Walters last year. I thought he just played pain for way too many minutes. Like, it's just. You want really good quality minutes from Payne, and it just I know he can play 65, but it doesn't mean you have to play him 65, 70. I'd much rather see Payne play 58, 55, 58, intense. You know what I mean? Hit a bloke, you know all that sort of stuff, and have him fresh at the end of the game. I think that could play a big um, thing. I mean, oh, I say yo, 200 meters, what a game! This is against a good four pack, man. So pretty damn impressive from Penrith. Pretty damn impressive. All right, we'll have a look at the team stats. I mean, that'll get it done, 85%. I mean, Melbourne Storm, yeah, it's nuts. Nearly ran for two kilometres, and the best thing about it is they restricted Melbourne to only 1,400. Ridiculous. Six, 661 post contact. That's hard to do against a poor team, man. Six line breaks to four. Um, tackle breaks, 30 to 23. Average set distance, 40 each. Um, pretty good from the Storm. And Melbourne... Um, Penrith usually good at restricting you into the 30s. Uh, both really good. Um, ruck speed, I said if this is under 3.5, you're doing good. Uh, offloads, 9 to 13. Storm win that one. Uh, what else we got here? Um, grubbers. I mean, Storm defended quite well. Tackle efficiency, 90. If there's a 9 at the front of this, you're doing good. Uh, missed tackles, 23. That'll get it done to 30. Still not bad. Uh, but yeah, errors, um, 12. Um, not good enough. Yeah. Well, it's not actually not horrendous, but yeah, it's just, like I said, if you you want to you want your errors under ten if you can, and then too many penalties as well. Too many penalties. Yeah, three ruck infringements each. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it was a um, cool thing. Is Pappenhausen looks back? So I, I watched just the highlights of his game on the Sunny Coast. Everyone was saying he looked brilliant. Oh, I might be tripping, but I didn't think he looked like Pap, as if he would, like his first game back. I'm not saying he should look as like he did when he was literally ripping the NRL apart. Um, leading, like when Pap, people don't realise, Pappenhausen, when he shattered his kneecap, was so far ahead in the, in the point scored totals, or whatever you want to call them. It literally took about seven or eight weeks for someone to take over him. Um, he was so far, like, he was scoring tries left, right, and centre. Kicking was flawed, like, um, pen, not, yeah, well, penalty goal kicking and conversion kicking. He was so far ahead of the pack. Um, but, yeah, I didn't see that from Pappy. I don't know if they're going to rush him back in. But if you look at the casualty ward, it actually says he's back around 24. Um, it says need round 24, which is next round. So I'm not too sure... Um, if he is going to play back, I'd, pro I'd I don't know, maybe maybe I missed something, but to me, just watching the highlights of that um, that Sunny Coast game, he did not look like Paps. Um, yeah, the Paps of old. Like, Pap bro, go do yourself a favour and go watch a Paps highlight reel. He's a freak, man, absolute freak. Um, so we'll have to wait and see, but um, 
I mean, who have Melbourne Storm got next week? Um, they've got the Raiders, so big game. So top four spot on the line. So big, big game, that one. Jesus Christ. Um, big game for both two because Sharks, Knights, and Rabbits all have very winnable games. So you, re- you don't want to lose this one. You, all of a sudden, you're in this, and you're fighting in this pack again when these sort of top four or five teams have sort of had a little gap on the six down for a little while. But, um, yeah, have to wait and see. Have to wait and see. So... But yeah, I'm excited to see Pabs back. He's he's a legend. All right, so oh man, I'm, a, I'm I was so gutted when I mean Val Holmes. I mean it was he got he should have been suspended. But I, I did. I hardest I just want to watch superstars play, and I was really disappointed when he was he got suspended because I was really looking forward to it. Um, watching it, you know, because I, I I actually thought that Mel uh, Broncos named their best possible team. I know technically it's not, but um, yeah, just. You know, I thought it, I thought that was their best possible team, and I was really disappointed, especially if you're a Cowboys fan. But then Broncos lose <laughs> their halfback, and you're like, oh, it sort of really evened it up. And the bookmakers agreed. It literally went like a buck ninety each, and I really didn't know. And people kept messaging me, oh, now Reynolds is out. Who do you think's going to win? And I'm like, look, I'm, I've tipped the Broncos, so I'm staying with them. But pff, I got no idea. I got no idea. So, Kyle felt was good in his comeback. Um, Carrigan was brilliant. Got another one. Try scoring machine. Watch out, Alex Johnson. He's coming for your record, man. Uh, while she was brilliant, we had him as a try scorer. Cobo as well, with a late intercept. But I did a TikTok video on this and um, Broncos. Now this is last year, right? And the reason why I, I called them to fall out of the eight, I thought they were going to. I thought they were way higher on the ladder than they actually were, like as good a team as they were, and I had them falling out of the eight. And the reason was, you can tell, and I did this, I did a TikTok video on this, and a lot of people agreed with me. Um, A really good team, if you pull their fullback, their, their, you know, like your Nathan Cleary out, your Reynolds out, your whatever out, you should be able to still function just fine. Like, you shouldn't be relying on your halfback to get your wins. Like to, like I said, your wins should come from good tackle efficiency, good line speed, you know, in attack, fast play the balls, good completions, you know, playing as a team, defensive scrambles, all that sort of good stuff. And yeah, your halfback really is, you know, he's there to make the smart plays, you know, he's kicking to the corners, he's, you know, he's getting the ball where it needs to go, getting the boys around the park, you know, like... You know, standing up in big moments to ice games and stuff like that. <clears throat> Whereas your, your team should get get you in the positions for your half to sort of do all that good stuff. And last year, Broncos didn't have that. But this year, like I said, I, I, that's why I was sort of really excited to see. Because I was like, well, this might actually tell us where Brisbane are at. And they were brilliant. They were brilliant. You know, like they... Like, like I said, Penrith, Nathan Cleary comes out. Like Cogger comes in. Who was it year before? Sullivan... And they're still Penrith. You know what I mean? Whereas last year, Broncos, Reynolds goes down. Broncos were a Q Cup team. They're terrible. Broncos look great. You know what I mean? And like there was like they probably would have won this game by more. But um just obviously a few, you know, uh Reese Walsh trying to do a bit much. Whereas if Reynolds is in the team, you know, that he would have just, you know, played the percentages and stuff like that. A couple of kicks, I think, Reese kicked dead as well. And, you know, maybe a couple of kicks that weren't quite as, you know, pinpoint from, I can't remember the guy who filled in for him, what's his name? Jock Madden. You know what I mean? But it was still all there. You know what I mean? It was like a little less polish on the game. You know what I mean? Like Reynolds probably would have got a couple of repeat sets where Reese kicked the ball dead and stuff like that. But damn good, man. So Broncos are legit. Like, they're legit. They're... To me, like I said, they've gone from a, a premiership contender to a genuine premiership threat. I, I really believe that. And um, I, I honestly believe that this team they put on the field, Chuck Reynolds in here though, is the best team they could possibly field. I said this before, this Pakura, he, he's, he's 100% giving them a little... Because there was a few problems... At the start of the year, right, the, the, here's the things I said I didn't like about the Broncos. I said I didn't like how uh, Kevin Walters played pain for too many minutes, but he actually has dialed them down a little bit. But I don't think that's really been solved, but that's probably the one thing that hasn't really been solved. I was really worried about Reese Walsh's and Selwyn Cobbo's and Corey Oates being in the same team. And um, just a lot of errors. They've been in the top five for errors for the past few years. 
Um, I, I said I, I wasn't huge on Billy Walters, but he seems to have come pretty good. So that to me is a problem solved. The other one was I really didn't like the edge back row. Oh, Kurt Catewell's good, but he's you know what I mean. I felt like I feel like really good teams have really good strike edge back rowers. And Jordan Ricky for me just wasn't that. Like I, I kept everyone kept telling me how good this kid is gonna be, and I just couldn't see it. This Brandon Pakura dude already has a longer highlight reel for than Jordan Ricky, and he's played like seven games or something like that. This dude is legit. He is really really good. He runs beautiful lines inside, outside shoulder. Like he's back against the grain, floating out. What like he's really really good, and he is, he's offered heaps of strike on that edge, which is just. It makes Broncos so much more dangerous because now you got second rollers, you got you know you got wingers that can you got edge, you, you got strike all over the park now. Whereas I felt Broncos before had good middles rolling forward and they had like good wingers, but you had to get the ball to them. Now with this Pakora dude running bulk lines, sorry for bumping the mic, um, it, it can it can it can open up your out the back play so much better. It doesn't matter, like you can run a you can run a like. For example, Sharks, I'm trying to think who else, um, Warriors, all these. The, 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 re, the reason they can shift the ball out to the wingers so good is, and they strip you for numbers so hard. Even um, the Bunnies are really good at it. So, for example, Kula Matangi, um, Nakora, Nakora, um, Niakora and Nakora, they run these really hard, nice lines, and because they punch through sometimes, defence has to stay tight, and then that just opens up your edges. And uh, Broncos were so easy to read back in the day because Jordan Ricky don't run good lines, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't. I thought I think Kate Kerr was a really good footy player, but I don't really like his line running. So it was hard to get the ball to yourself and to get your ball to you. They kept, everyone kept going, "Oh, why doesn't Stags get much ball?" I'm like, because it's the defense can just spread out because they know you know the edges edge back rolls aren't running dope lines and breaking through. Um, like dead set, I reckon Jordan Ricky's highlight reel for his career would be about 40 seconds long. I reckon this Pakira dude's already got a pretty solid highlight reel. He's uh, he's really good. He's really good. And he was available for this game but didn't get a run. So obviously, uh, Kevin Walters sees what I see because, yeah, he, he's he been brilliant. Um, and I actually got to give Kevin Walters, a, I actually really like this. So when he moved Carrigan out of the lock position into the edge back row, so Pakura comes off and Paddy Carrigan was going to the edge, um, I really, I didn't, I, cause I'm like, well, why would you move, you know, the best, second best, third best lock at worst out of his best position? But I actually really like it. So essentially the, the one knock you could have on Pakura is, you know, he's probably like, I think if you left him on the field for 80 minutes, you're going to get a couple of errors out of him. You know what I mean? He just looks like that guy probably, and just due to inexperience, just, you know, like just whatever. He doesn't look like he's got a flawless set of hands. So I really like, so you don't want him on the field for the whole time, right? You don't want to fatigue him and stuff like that either. But I actually really liked what he did was he pulled Brandon Bakura off, put Paddy into that edge, which is, you know, great. And then he brought, who did he bring on? Palacia? I think he brought in Palacio, Xavier, whoever it was, to just shore up the middle. So the middle doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have the same punch as if Paddy was there, but it's still a solid middle. Paddy goes to an edge. Pakura gets a break. You, you get what I'm saying? I, I'm good coaching. Really good coaching from uh, Kevin Walters. I thought it was great. And uh, like I said, this um, I, I massively underestimated Broncos' depth this year as well. They've been absolutely brilliant. Like this Xavier Wilson, Palacio, Jensen, Smoothie, um, Hetherington, great. So... Yeah, I massive. I didn't underestimate the Broncos. I, people people kept saying, "Oh, you were wrong about the Broncos." I'm like, "No, no, no, I wasn't wrong. I was right about the Broncos. I, I did, they've just fixed the shit I said was wrong with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, "No, nah, well, they do this, this, and this wrong." So you know, I don't think they're going to be you know a, a genuine premiership threat. They've fixed all the stuff I said was wrong with them, and that's why I'm giving them raps now because they genuinely have. They've they've. <laughs> Someone, uh, Broncos fan, said to me the other day, he's like, oh, thanks for coming around on the on the Broncos, man. You, you know, like, thanks for the kind words. And I was like, hey, bro, I, I just say what I see. And last year I didn't see a good rugby league team. This year I see a very good rugby league team. Simple as that. You know, it's, um, there's no hate. I don't hate teams. I don't like teams. I just, if, if I see a genuine threat, I'll say they're great. If they're not, they're not. Um, One, like, like I said, we... we I, Broncos being a genuine premiership threat now, I have to compare them to Penrith and 
you know, hold, hold them at a high standard and stuff like that. The, the one, and I love this as a fan, but as if I was a, you know, a coach or a, a genuine Broncos fan, the little thing I'd be worried is, Reese is genuinely pumping out the errors at the moment, and they've been so good it hasn't mattered. But remember, in the finals, just one game, you lose one game and you're out. He is running away with the error rate with it, like. I actually haven't seen a bigger gap between first and second in these in these positions ever. Um, this is getting outrageous. Like ten extra handling errors and second place is absurd. Like normally there's two or three difference between second and you know what I mean. Well, it's normally like this: 33, 33, 31. You know what I mean? They're sort of close, but that is absurdly high. And again, they've. If honestly, if Reese Walsh was in their team last year, the way they defended, I reckon Broncos probably would have come last. I know that sounds weird. What you put Reese Walsh in their team and they'd get worse? Yeah, man. Because one thing that's so good about the Broncos this year is, like Reese Walsh did a few stupid errors. I I don't know what he got exactly, but it was two or three pretty dumb errors, right? Just throwing the ball out. But they were defense was so good. They just defended the error, so it didn't matter. Um. So yeah, really, really good. Change team, D- defensive scrambles, defensive reads are better. Like everything's better. But um, yeah, you don't want to be, you don't want to be throwing, you don't want to be given like a Penrith or let's say the Bunnies do hit their form or a, you know, a Melbourne Storm too many extra crack bites at the cherry. Um, I mean, like I said, as a fan, Reese Walsh throwing, bro. I'm loving watching it, bro. Like like I said about Penrith earlier, Penrith don't try and score tries every set. Reese Walsh does. Whenever Reese has the ball in his hand, he's like, "How can I get in there? Try in the end zone or whatever you want to call it, the the end goal." That that is literally what's running through Reese's head every time. What is the best way to get in? <laughs> and as a fan, I love it. So good to watch. But if I was his coach, I'd smack the shot out of him. <laughs> yeah, so good to watch, man. Uh, all right, so Broncos stats. Let's have a little look. See, yeah, like like I said, if Reese can just tidy that up a little bit, I mean. I think he's averaging close to three errors a game. Reese, just give me one error. You know what I mean? One error. You know, try something stupid once. If it doesn't come off, all right, pull the handbrake on it. But uh, but now he's been he's been brilliant, man. Um, and what I love, what I'm loving about these numbers from the Broncos. Look how nice and even they are. I mean, Reese, 185 outside backs. I mean, Jesse Arthur's just wasn't getting the ball. It's smart from the Cowboys. Jesse Arthur. Oh, this was another brilliant thing about, and this is why I, I believe this was their strongest team as well. Um, if, if Reynolds was in it. There was a kick early in the game, right? And it was a beautiful kick. I can't remember who put it up. And it was it just came down right on the spot. And it was sort of... Arthur's had to jump out to this way. And he just took it so beautifully. Came to the ground. Didn't get dragged back and didn't go. With all due respect to Corey Oates, he puts that ball down. Uh, I, like, he just does. Like, he... Corey Oates can take a gem, but... I, I, like that, that genuinely... Could have been, you know what I mean? And then and then Corey Oates is one of those guys, when he puts one down, he puts four down. Um, and I, I, I love Jesse Arthur. He's like, he's so, like, like I said, because Reese and Cobo can definitely, they've got errors in them. I love having Jesse Arthur's there, who he just knows he's going to take the ball. Like, he's not going to make dumb errors. He's, he's brilliant. So, yeah, I actually, like I said, Ricky gone out and, and Jesse Arthur's been all year. He's been, he's like Taruva from um, Penrith, just so solid. Is he going to score all the tries like Tor and all this? Nah, but he's not going to let him in. He's not going to drop the ball. He's not going to do dumb errors. You give him half a chance, he'll score a try. And that's that's to me what you want. You know, like, I don't think that it's, it's great as Corey Oates as, you know, um, those kick returns are. I'd happily trade those off for the no errors. That, that's just me, man. So, but yeah, Broncos. Uh, Ezra Mann looked a bit dicey. Um, his knee looked a bit bad. Let's have a look at the casualty ward for the Broncos. See how they're looking. They got Parramatta next week. So Jesse Arthur's did get knocked out. Corey Oates isn't back. To Piaz. So Herbie Farmworth did do his knee. Or they said it was a cork, but now it's coming up as a knee. Hetherington's out and. I'd actually rest Reese Walsh, not Reese Walsh, Adam Reynolds for this game. Give Jock Madden another game. I genuinely think um, Broncos could probably beat Parramatta anyway without Adam Reynolds. And Groin, Groin was the one injury I've got through my whole my whole illustrious career. <laughs> um, 
it's one of those weird ones that can just like, oh yeah, it's all good, and then it just goes again, and then it lingers around for another two or three weeks, and then you think it's gone again, and then it goes. I I'd, I'd just go Reynolds just having to just kick back, have another week off, bro, because um that Jock Madden like he was fine, he was absolutely fine. I mean, if they lose anyway, I mean, I'm pretty sure they'll still finish second and get a home final. I'd be I'd be one hundred percent giving Reynolds another another week off. I think they could. If they were playing Penrith, I'd probably play him, but have a week off, bro. Reynolds has earned it, man. He's been so damn brilliant. Um, but yeah, exciting times. Exciting times if you're a Broncos fan. Dolphins, Knights. Um, we'll just rush through this one. Um, look, I'm a little worried for the Knights just because... Uh, actually, just before I get on to that, I'll go to the Cowboys. Actually, we haven't finished. We haven't even done the player stats. Come on, man. Um... Didn't even fit. Come on, man. Pick up your game, man. I know you're hungover, but come on, be better. Um, yeah, Cowboys. I've I've get, gone on and I've double wristed the the Broncos for how great they are. Cowboys for me. Um, and I, I was saying this, man. Like, Cowboys were murdering everyone, like murdering them. And then when they played the Sea Eagles, I was like, oh, that was flat. And everyone was like, "What are you talking about? You know the refs." I was like, "Nah, bro. They were, like they won three games, three tries to two, won the game. So great. No one. So this is a funny thing. When I see a team win, I still dissect the game. When most people see a team win, they're like, "Well, they're awesome." I'm like, "Well, yeah, okay." And and they ha- have been awesome. Pen, like to me, Cowboys have been a top four team over. Like been playing top four, top four quality rugby league for the past two or three months. But then, yeah, they played Manly where I was, I was like, oh, a few chinks in the armour there. Then they played Para, plenty of cheeks. And like, they, were, they were actually terrible in the last 20 minutes. Like, Parramatta haven't been great. And they came right over the top of them at the end. And I was like, oh, they're flattening out. And then they played the Titans where they were really flat. And then, you know, and then they got the Broncos. And I actually think they stood up in this game. But it's a local derby at home. Big brother, little brother. It was going to be easy to get up for. But I, still felt, I could still see a little bit of flatness in there. They've got to buy next week. That could not come at a better time. They need it. Cowboys, I hope Todd Payton doesn't work them too hard through this off-season, off off-week. Go to Bali, bro. Go do, go do what the Knights did. <laughs> like, go get a tan. Just There's plenty of islands up near Townsville. Just go, just have a few days off and kick back, drink some beers, stay out of the gym, relax and just chill. Because they're, they're, they're burning out. I don't think you realise how hard it is to go on these big runs when you're... You can you can burn out really quickly. And I, I'd noticed the Cowboys had been burning out. They, they'd, look, they, they'd looked worse and worse and worse. Like, they stood up in this game and gave a valiant effort, but they, they were a bit flat. Um, they definitely were. Um, but, yeah, it, it just nothing nothing quite clicked the same, all that sort of stuff. And, again, I think they can get back to that how they were just murdering teams, but they need a genuine week off where they just kick back, relax, you know, just relax the mind too. It's very fatiguing mentally to... Like, this is the thing, and this this is why when you have a bad poor end of the season, and we're about to talk about the Knights in a minute, very similar thing, when you have a poor start to the season, same with Parramatta, it's, you almost start playing finals games in the middle of the year. So, like, the Cowboys have literally been playing, not do-or-die games, but, like, for a while there, they were literally, well, we have to win this week. We have to win this week. We have to win this week. That's so fatiguing. And you get you get eight or nine weeks into it, you, you, you're you gone, you know? So that's where I sort of feel like the Cowboys are at now. They've done such a good job to get themselves back in the hunt. I think, that, like I said, they just need to go away, rest, relax, and then they can come back nice and fresh. So even though it hasn't been great from the Cowboys the last two or three weeks, um, you like I said, they're still in a way better position than they were a few months ago. So, um, yeah, perfect time for the buyer for them. Really, really good. Um, now, why I wanted to talk about that is I feel like the Knights, to me, look like they've. I feel like the Knights. This was sort of their game, like against, like, like I said, against the Cowboys, like Parramatta or something. Like, yeah, they got the win. But they were definitely down a little bit. They looked a little flat. Nothing, you know what I mean? It wasn't quite as sharp as it had been in the past. You know, leaking more tries. Just maybe, you know, a few little effort areas weren't quite there and stuff like that. But look, they got the win. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, they're who have Cowboys? Who have the Knights got next week? So they got the Doggies next week. This will be an interesting test. Um, 
and we're about to talk about Parramatta, but for yeah, but yeah, if if they just if they lose or just beat the doggies, you you you'd sort of almost guarantee that they're going through a similar thing that like Parramatta and the Cowboys and all that have gone through, where they looked brilliant and then it's just like ooh, ooh, mental fatigue, physical fatigue, all that sort of stuff. So this will be a really interesting one against the doggies next week, who are coming off a boy and they're pretty fresh, but uh, Caelan Pong is brilliant. Uh, I thought Hastings has been pretty damn good too, but yeah, it was a yeah, it was it was pretty good. Big Val on uh, Bradman Best was a good battle, but god damn, um, whereas he uh, Jermaine Osako, Jesus Christ, what a freak! Four tries was it? One, two, three. I thought he had four. Oh, that's right. He was going to give him the fourth one. <laughs> uh, oh, that was Ravalawa who got four. Um, yeah, it was uh, Fitzgibbon got off. Uh, Fitzgibbon, to me, he's definitely become the biggest sook in the NRL. <laughs> Anything remotely... Ah, he throws... Ah, he's crying to the ref. I said, Jesus Christ, come on, man. Just enjoy your last year in rugby league, man. You're going to Super League next year. Um, but yeah, I thought the Dolphins, you know, were pretty solid. They stuck in there. It was, it was you know, it was pretty damn good. And yeah, it was... It's, uh, some of these stats from bloody Dom Young, man. Not Jesus Christ. They, I'm... They would have been stoked they had him. Look at that, 213 running metres, 62 post-contact, two line breaks. Pretty sure he got some more. Uh, try assist and 10 tackle breaks. Jesus Christ. Uh, Bradman Best had a little quiet game for his lofty high stance. I thought Gagai was really good. Uh, Callum Pong was brilliant. Um, yeah, Greg Marju was pretty solid too. Um, but yeah, it was... It was it was good, but uh, I am a little worried again, like for the for the for the Dolph uh, for, for the Knights. A uh, few injuries as well starting to like creep up on them too. So Saifidi, both Saifidis now. I mean they have got the Bulldogs next week. Um, Clune's been out for a minute. Um, Bradman Best as well. Uh, so, ooh, you know that could that could get dicey. I mean they got the doggies next week, but like I said, they dropped that one. Good. Um, it's gonna like I said, you drop a game now, and you go, you drop out of the eight, pretty much. If you're in this position, if you're in here, if you drop a game, you're, uh, yeah, you 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 probably drop out of the eight. So, yeah, we'll have to have to wait and see. But I'm not too sure what Knights run looks like home. We'll have a quick look. Okay, who have Knights? So Knights have got. Um, so can the Knights make the eight? Um, so what they got Bulldogs, which you know they could obviously definitely win, but it's not a not a certainty by any means. And then they've got the Rabbits. To, you know, I mean that Rabbits haven't been great, but yeah, you know, um, you never they could click into gear any minute now. And then they got the Sharks again. Not it's pretty tough, so it's definitely not an easy run home. And then they've got where are they? Where are they? I missed them. Knights are there, and then St George. So they finished with St George. So definitely very winnable um, for them, um, but we'll have to wait and see. It's uh, like I said, I, I see that little bit of fatigue in them again, but yeah, we'll have to have to wait and see. But let's have a look at the team stats real quick. I mean, this is this is where Dolphins get you. They just complete so high, and yeah, like I said, they were pretty poor with the ball. The Knights seventy five percent. I think Dolphins won the running meters. Like I said, they they had more running in them. I mean, they were just look at that average set distance. You know, the Knights' line speed was way down on how it could have been. Um, like I said, these you know they they won the ruck though very very quick, but then they didn't really slow down the Dolphins' ruck. Very very similar. Uh, play the ball speed. Um, yeah, it was like I said, it was tackle efficiency was so bad from the from the Dolphins. Um, look at that, 52 missed tackles. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, the Knights are pretty damn lucky, man. Like, for real, that could have, this could have got real ugly. Uh, this could They could have lost this easily. If, if, if Let's say they missed the same amount of tackles. Jesus, they probably could have lost this game. Um, but, yeah, just too many too many errors from the Knights. But, yeah, like I said, you can have an off game, rest and regroup and see how you go. But, yeah, Knights definitely, I think, need to just find another gear if they're going to lock that final spot up because cows, para, you know, well, not, maybe not para, but, you know, cows can push back in here real easily. Uh, very, very easily cows can push back in here. And, I mean, para may have a tough run home, but you never know either. So, yeah, definitely need to keep pushing the old knights. But, yeah, looking good, man. Looking good. They'd, who would have thought, you know, 
what, eight, ten weeks ago, that would be sitting in seventh. Real good. All right. Man. So disappointed. This. So we got this game wrong. I had, I had bunnies and shout out to the Sharks for showing up, um, messing with some stuff and um, getting the dub here. I mean, it wasn't overly convincing. It was three tries to four, but they were, they were, they were the better team for 60-odd minutes. It's just rabbits can score tries really quickly, and they did. They scored three in 10 minutes. So that, Sharkies were genuinely better for 60, 65 minutes of this game. Um yeah, Sinbin to Tom Burgess in the 75th minute didn't help, obviously, um, when they were coming home strong. Um, but yeah, they dominated the first half. And yeah, it's just, it's just, I don't know, it's just, Bunnies just, it's not clicking. Like, Bunnies' offense is usually the best to watch. Like, they're the best for stripping you for numbers. They're the best at creating three on twos and four on twos and three on ones. And. And they were just running into each other, hitting flat, like Cody Walker bumping into people, like into his own players. It was, like, it was ugly. Like, it looked like Q Cup. It was absolutely bizarre. And they, they were just way off, man. It was uh, pretty hard on the eyes. Like, they, they looked... Like, to me, the Tigers looked slicker in attack than them. Than them. And, the, you know, the, it was um, it was pretty bad. And Latrell Mitchell as well, I just didn't... I mean, I, I'm not one of these guys that... Um, like people, are, oh, he's lazy, and you know he doesn't even. He only shows up when he wants to. And but I'm not one of those. But I, I sort of get it. Like imagine going to watch LeBron James play. Like you, you know, you go, oh man, I can't wait to watch LeBron play. And like you know, you go and you watch, and he took three shots. You'd be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like you, uh, you know, like oh, I just like I just want to see Latrell touch the ball heaps. And I, you know, he had plenty of involvement uh, last week, but I don't know. Something off about him, man. There is really something off about him. Cody Walker's kicking out. I don't know why he's doing bulk of the kicking as well. I mean, Lachlan Elliott. Yeah, it was, it was bizarre. But Tom Burge is suspended now. They're, they're in trouble, man. Joy Arrow went down with back spam. Their, their middle's so skinny as it is. Like, they're in serious trouble, man. They're in serious, serious trouble. They're very lucky they've got a pretty soft run home. Um, because they're... they're I would not be surprised if they miss the eight. I, I personally have them squeaking in, but I would not be surprised if they miss the eight. Um, for real, Connor. It's so good to see Connor Tracy having a proper crack. Connor Tracy is a genuine NRL player, and I'm not saying like he's good enough to play NRL. Like I reckon there's at least ten clubs where if Connor Tracy was in the team, he'd be an automatic starter. Like he is that good. He's he's absolutely brilliant. Uh, he's way too good to be playing New South Wales Cup. Um, yeah, he's he's been great. Like, Will Kennedy, for me, is better, but only... Like, and Will Kennedy is, you know, you'd almost say he's a premier fullback. And Conor Grace, he's not, he's not too far off. He's, he's bloody good. Um, but yeah, I thought it's... Um, Harodi, is that how you say his name? I thought he was actually pretty solid. Trindle was good. Um, yeah, Hines, just, he had he just had time to do what he wants. I felt like he looked rushed. ULE was brilliant. Nakora, pretty quiet for his high, high standards. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was good to see him bounce back and um, tinker with the team a little bit and get a win. Um, they've been way too good to miss to skid out of the finals the way they had. So, uh, look at that the completion rate high. No, that's what you wanted. That that's this is what's killed him. And Jesus Christ, look at how horrendous that is. Like like I, I wasn't joking when I said that before. Bunnies looked like a cute up team. Like they were awful. They were awful. Um, but I don't like the bunnies. Like I'm not a fan. I'm, I don't hate them either. I'm just like I don't care. But to, their attack has always been the best to watch. It is so beautiful. They look terrible. They they looked worse than the Tigers. Um, they honestly probably look worse than the Roosters. So, <laughs> the Roosters have had pretty much worse attack. Um, now the funny thing I noticed about this is how even these all stats all ended up, even though it was like a a real domination from the Sharks, but then maybe the Rabbitohs dominated like the what the last fifteen minutes or whatever. But running meters all about the same. Um, post contact pretty much exactly the same five line breaks each tackle breaks 44 each like this is so weird um, average set distance 46 to 40 so a bit different but average play the ball speed 3.59 3.53 so similar offloads sharky's got that one comfortably um there was a few others down here that were like almost identical um tackle efficiency was 80 from the terrible for both teams to be honest Oh yeah, missed tackles, 44 each. How weird is that? Like literally, <laughs> so many stats like identical. Bloody weird. Um, but yeah, good to see the Sharkies. Who are the Sharkies got next week? So they got the Titans. 
So they can they can they can have a little push up towards that top four, at very least try and finish in fifth or sixth so they get a home final. Um, so good to see the Sharkies get a win against the top eight team, even if even though it was literally eighth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, pretty damn good. We'll have a quick look at some player stats real quick. Um, yeah, Latrell, what do you end up with? So 124. See, look there. He actually got pretty damn involved. So I said he didn't get it. Oh, maybe I'm just being greedy. I just want to see him touch. I think I think maybe it's because Teddy and, you know, the other Premier fool, you know, your Dylan Edwards and, your, you know, your, even your Clint Gustafsons and your, your Hamasos when he was playing fullback, they're getting two or three touches a set, like every set, you know, and uh, maybe it's because he just doesn't do that, but... I mean, like, like I said, 15 runs is all right, but, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see 20. I'd love to see 20. I mean, he still ran for 124 metres. That's great. So, yeah, I'm not knocking him, but it's just, yeah, I just I just want to see a little more. That's all. Yeah, one try assist, one line break assist. I mean, like I said, those stats are great. Like, there's nothing wrong with them at all. I just I don't know how good he could be. And, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was good performance still. Um, who else was good? No one. To be honest, Kilimanjaro was pretty solid, but yeah, uh, Sharkies. I mean, got Tracy Hunter, Katoa. Jesus Christ, he had a blinder. Had stepped. He absolutely turned Latrell inside out as well. That was such a beautiful step. The short left and right, short left off to right. It's, uh, that was my favourite. Uh, but yeah, nice even performance everywhere. Toby Rudolph, 153 meters. He looks like he's finally got his match fitness back. Um, yeah. Pretty, pretty, just really good, nice, solid round out. They were really good for 60, 65 minutes. It was good. Um, yeah, still got to improve if they want to make it out of the first or second round of the finals, but they got to win, so that's the main thing. All right. Now, what did I say in the preview? I said, Parramatta... I don't know my exact words, but you guys probably watched the video and can let me know. <laughs> I said, Parramatta can't just win this game. They have to win it well so they can show me to make the eight. You know what I mean? And the main reason for that was, I mean, they're playing Dragons, who are pretty much the worst team in the comp. Pretty damn, one of the worst teams in the comp. Without Suwali, no, what's his name? Suli? Suli, sorry. Without DeBellin, you know what I mean? And I know they're missing plenty of players too, but I'm like, Parramatta's run home is Broncos next week, Roosters, um, Penrith, and then a boy. Now, the reason why I said I need to see something from in this game and a win just wasn't enough is they're going to they run home to make the finals. They're going to have to. So they've got the boy, which will help. They've got the Roosters, which they can definitely win. They're going to have to beat the Broncos or Penrith to make the finals. And that's why I needed to see something from in this game where I was like, oh, yeah, they could, you know what? If they have a really good game, they could knock Broncos off. Maybe Broncos, Reynolds isn't playing or this and that and the other. You know, if they they get the bounce of the ball, couple of nice. You know, they they could they could they could ambush Brisbane, and I didn't see it, man. Their edge defense was so flimsy; it was it was awful. Um, and the thing that frustrates me about Parra, right? And last year they were better at it, but they still you know they've always sort of done this. Like they were, they had clearly more talent than that St George, right? And the first fifth, ten whatever minutes was twelve minutes. They they won they did everything a rugby league team supposed to and what they what Brad, uh, Brad Arthur tries and what they won all the contact they were fine in their front fast play the balls and they didn't do anything until they won the contact right you know defense of I thought they were winning the ruck on both sides like with the ball and without the ball they were completely dominated they were bashing the hell out of dragons and then Cartwright starts doing all this crazy stuff and he pulls a couple tries out of his ass I think he set one up scored one whatever. And you're like, damn, Parrell, good, man. And then the next set, Cartwright just, like, why, why, do you need to, why do you need to throw another, like, why do you need to do that? Like, you're up 10-0, you're absolutely rolling this team. Just get to your kick and kick to a corner. You've already done two crazy things. Why do you need to do a third crazy thing in the first 15 minutes? You get what I'm saying? Like, two crazy things is enough. And I was actually thinking when I was watching the game, oh, man, I I was so impressed with Cartwright, and I'm sitting there going, you know, I, was, I think about what I'm going to say in these videos, and I'm like, oh, man, I, I reckon he's one of the most improved players in the NRL. Like, Sean Johnson's obviously resurrected his career. I'm like, I was about to almost throw him in that thing, not quite Sean Johnson level, but 
go, you know what, I've never seen a resurrection of a career like that. And then he just went, did rubbish after rubbish after rubbish. But then again, he scored another try later on that tied the game up and he, he, he did a lot of good stuff. He ran over the top of blokes as well. But they've just got to, you know, just look at Penrith. They, they try a couple things. All right, just just holster that sword for a minute. Put it away. Just just We don't need to offload every time there's one available. We're up 10 nil 10 minutes into the game. We can just, we can, that the Dragons lost a player in the f- first 30 seconds. We can just hold the ball, kick to corners for 10, 15 minutes. We're going to tie them out. The game will open up later. Just just relax. Don't try and beat teams in the first 10 minutes. And I, I felt like Parramatta last year did literally blow, they would blow teams off the park last year um, in the first 20 minutes. And they'll be winning 20 nil at 20 minutes in. And the teams just wouldn't recover. I don't think they have that same firepower. Sean Lane was on fire, just offloading like crazy. Papa Lee, he was doing his thing. You know, like, it, they don't quite have that same, you know, oomph. I still think they're a very good rugby league team, but um, don't have that oomph that they had last year. I don't think that's the right way to play from now. I think they go bang, bang, all right, cool, we're up. Just be smart for 10 minutes. Let, let's let's just get through our sets for 10 minutes. That's probably You'll probably get five sets in 10 minutes, and then, then we can throw the ball around again, you know? But anyway... No, no, that was sort of my thing, but to me, I, in the first ten minutes, I was like, "Oh, Paris going to win this forty nil," and then they just, and then just before half time, I'm like, "Paris going to lose this thirty to 10. <laughs> like you know, that's how quickly it changed. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Uh, this kid here um, was it Arthur Miller Stefan. Man, nothing I love seeing more than a young kid with a big smile on his debut score a try. And when I for the first ten minutes, I was like, "Damn, Paris got another one." His defensive reads were so awful, but you give him a pass. He was up against uh, this beast. Dropped three on him. Um, but yeah, he actually... Ravalara, I've never seen it. Uh, he, he had probably the worst start to rugby league game I've ever seen. He let in tries and just was getting bungled in the touch left, right, centre. <laughs> and then he goes on to score four tries in the rest of the game and looked unstoppable. Um, it was literally probably the worst start to finish, like finished the best I've ever seen. It was crazy. But uh, yeah, obviously a bit of work to do on his defense. Um, but like coming into a team the day before kickoff, and, you know, slotting in there, it's always going to be a tough ask. At the start of the game too, I was loving what Dylan Brown was doing with Mitch Moses. They linked up so many times. I love when sixes and sevens play off each other. I hate when there's this one on each side. I love when they swing around together. Um, fuck, he looked good, man. But then again, just because their Ford stopped winning the middle and winning the contact and doing stupid stuff, that that all went away. And um, it, it goes to show, like Brad, that's why I love Brad Arthur as a coach. Like when Paramount, when well any team, but when when you can you can genuinely notice when Parramatta are, are winning the contact and when they're not. And yeah, it's um, yeah, it's. Um, I think I thought actually Alfon Gowie probably had one of his better games, but. RCG being out, you don't realise, sometimes you don't realise how good a player is until they're not playing. Like Junior Paulo, I mean, sorry, RCG makes Junior Paulo so much better. If we look at the team stats here, when RCG and um, Junior Paulo are in the team together, right, Parramatta are running for two kilometres every game. I don't know what you're thinking. RCG doesn't run for 500 metres in a game. I know, but what happens is... When RCG goes bang, he hits the line, gets up, plays the ball quickly. Then the next set, the next run is normally, you know, 12, 30 metres or a line break or, you know, a shift to a line break. So it opens up extra metres. Whereas um, when Junior Paulo is your only real punch through the middle, it's, it's a lot easier to shut down. And, um, yeah, like I said, when it when it's... I really like the the big bustling prop and then, the, you know, he's a bit of a taller, faster prop. And it's it's a nice combo. It's all that boom, boom. It's all that patty and pain ass. You know, bang bang, like they're very different. It's far, it's big and bustling, and then fast, big and bustling, fast. It's 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 good. It's a nice punch. Like like I, I actually like them. Those two as a duo, probably the best. Like Paddy and Payne Haas, and then RCG and Junior Paulo. They got they got a nice. It's very hard to stop. And then the next one, that's your fast one because you just three or four blokes have had to tackle um, Junior, and then RCG just crunches in the line, gets up, plays the ball quickly. Now your next ones, you're attacking. You're attacking um, play. Um, it works really well. And uh, literally since RCG has been out, Parramatta have been running for... Foot. Isn't that crazy? Parramatta have pretty much been running for 500 metres less a game. 
not so. It's 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 absolutely wild. Um, what a what an impact one player can have, a, f- a good forward can have. And I don't know if you've noticed it in the state of Origin too. I, I love Junior Paulo, but I, I really liked uh, New South Wales better with RCG in the team. Could bang, hit the line, play the ball. Then then next then that opened up Bradman Best and all that to go down the short side after that. Yeah, RCG is way underrated in my opinion. Really good player. Um. um all right, so what have we got? So Parramatta completed quite well. Um, Dragons did not. Um, pretty even. Uh, all run. Low. I just highlighted this. I know they won it, but yeah, I, I just wanted to highlight why uh, how good RCG is for Parramatta and what a big loss he's been. Uh, Post contact meters. I mean, and, and these are massively down since RCG's been out too. Restricted uh, Dragons, but they lost a prop. I think it was twenty seconds into the game. Um, line breaks nine to five. I mean, Dragons won that comfortably. Tackle breaks forty three from Para. Um, and yeah, look at this average set distance for Para. That's I've never seen it this low. Absolutely against not a great forward pack. Um, just speaking of forward packs, so their their prop went out. I can't remember his name. Who who was it? Who got knocked out again? Uh, Molo, Blake Laurie, man, got to give him a shout out. So before when I was looking at all the team lists before the season kicked off. I remember seeing Blake Laurie there, and I'm like, fucking shit. Like, you know, not shit, just like that big sort of round prop. Like, he, he's a proper, like, he's like blocker back in the day. Like, a bit out of shape, but just so big and strong. And, you know what I mean? You just, you know, they roll, they just bounce dudes on and all that. I was like, man, that sort of prop's dead, man. Like, he's, he's really going to struggle this year. Man, he's been brilliant, man, for real. He's been really, really good. Um, I actually did a post when Zach Lomax got dropped. And I said, I remember saying, why would they drop their second best player? And then someone said, um, someone was a smart, random dude on my TikTok said, oh, Blake Laurie's by far their best, second best player. And I was like, I can't really argue with you, mate. He's been brilliant. <laughs> like, to be, oh, he's, he's been great, man. He just he played the whole first half. And I was sitting there going, oh, Jesus, he's going to struggle. You know, having to play you know a lot more minutes with Molo being off from a HIA. He was great. He came. He had a short break. Came back on in the second half. He was real good. I'm interested to see what his stats were. Um, yeah. So play the ball speed about the same. What else we got here? What else we got? Uh, tackle efficiency pretty average from both. Uh, 85 each roughly. Uh, 12 errors from Dragons. That'll that'll kill you. And only two penalties conceded from Para. I I thought Para actually got away with. They were holding. St. George down for a really long time in the first half but then I felt like in the second half Dragons are actually holding Para down for a long time and didn't get penalties there so I sort of felt like it evened out a little bit uh, but yeah I reckon Parramatta probably three or four times Lusick in particular was just laying all over blokes and not getting penalties uh, they could have easily been penalties but um, yeah what do you do that's can't help what the ref is blowing or not blowing well, let's have a look let's see how we, let's see um yeah, Laurie, how many meters he ran for? I was pretty, I was pretty impressed with him, man. Where is he, the big fella? Oh, there he is. Oh yeah, he ran for 167. Shit job, Blake. Nah, he, he was brilliant. He was really, really good. Really impactful minutes. Ravalar was great, 190 meters. You know, four line breaks, six tackle busts. God damn. Um, Jesus Christ, he's Sloan dude. He's a freak, isn't he? 147 meters, two line breaks, one line break assist, one try assist, three tackle breaks. Ben Hunt, I thought he was pretty poor to be honest. I mean, his numbers are actually pretty damn good, but yeah, I don't know. I just felt like he didn't do all the stuff a uh, uh, Reynolds would do. I just I felt like he kicked the ball dead a little bit and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, he's still obviously had pretty solid stats considering. Um, but yeah, he just. Um, yeah, it's hard, hard when you're in a beaten beaten team like that sometimes for Benny Hunt. But yeah, it was a bit of a strange game, man. It was like I said, t- ten minutes in, I thought Parra going to win by forty, and then thirty minutes in, I thought it's, uh, Dragons are going to win by thirty or forty. It was it was absolutely bizarre. Um, we'll have a look at some of Parra's stats. I mean, Clint Gutherson, brilliant, hundred eighty one meters, one line break assist. Five tackle breaks. Bull Panasini was all right, 129. Bradley Simonson, I thought he was pretty good. Only 124 metres, but they were good, solid metres. Two line breaks, one, uh, two try assists, two tackle busts. I'd give Dylan Brown a pass mark for his... He looked scary good in the first 15. Uh, line break, one line break, uh, one try assist, so pretty damn solid. 
And um, you know, funny. I felt like Mitch Moses was better than um, oh, what's his name, Ben Hunt. But then you know, Ben Hunt's stats are far better. <laughs> it's, it's it's funny how stats go sometimes. Junior Paulo, big effort from him, 178 meters, uh, one line break. Jesus Christ, the big fellas getting line breaks. And then Cartwright got himself a try, 158 meters. Um, one line break. I thought he had a try assist. Too. Oh no, that's right. He didn't throw the pass. He scored it himself. Um, you know, it was a bit worried, a bit weird how they. So Junior Paulo ended up playing 62 minutes. Ryan Madison played the full game. Oh, that's right. So Ryan Madison came off, but then literally straight away, um, Davey got knocked out and he had to go straight back on. Bryce Cartwright played the whole game. Uh, Moretti only played 17 minutes. Um, Wiramu Greg played nine minutes. Um, and then Makatoa played 19. So lots. Junior Paulo, Jesus Christ. Up, he's earning his pay, man. He's earning his pay. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see about Para. But yeah, like I said, they're going to either have to beat Brisbane or beat Penrith to get to the finals. And then, then still beat the Roosters as well. So yeah, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Imagine that, if they have to play Penrith to make the finals. And that the funny thing is, that could be the same thing for the Cowboys too. So Parramatta have a bye last round of the thing so Penrith will be their last actual game and then Cowboys last game is the Penrith as well so Penrith could literally <laughs> knock out Parramatta and the Cowboys <laughs> out of the out of the finals oh Jesus Christ last team you want to be playing in your final round for real oh Raiders yeah again this is the thing you can't bag them because they come on fit it's just, it's so, it's just, I don't know, it's frustrating to me. Like, they can't win a game 13+. plus. It is so damn bizarre. But I'm not going to sit here and rip on the Raiders. I just, I, I thought about it at half time. I was making a drink and um, I was like, they probably missed out on a little period during Origin because they didn't have any Origin representation to have a little, like, they hadn't been winning games by more than 10 points all year, right? And they're, they're doing all right. They'll come in fourth or fifth or something like that. They probably should have tinkered with the team then and, and tried, you know, your white net at lock for two or three games or just whatever it is, a Rapana at fullback. You like they're tinkering with the team now, it's so late in the season. Um it's 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 risky um doing it now because you could mess with chemistry and stuff like that. I feel like they might have dropped the ball there a little bit and gone, you know, not identified that problem early enough. Now they're like trying to fix it on the fly with a few rounds to go. And again, they're, they're not... Having said that, I feel like they did play a little more footy today. And they, it looked a bit better. Um, just, but Obviously, you just can't click your fingers, go play a bit of footy, and then start playing like the bunnies in their prime. Um, you know, it takes time for that sort of stuff. So I, I feel like they maybe dropped the ball a little bit there. Um, someone said to me the other day, I said, man, I'd, I'd love to see Jack White and that lock. And then, you know, um, what's his other one? Is it Fogarty or whatever his name is coming in? Whatever that other half. No, not Fogarty. Um, whoever they are, the backup half is. I can't remember his name. And um, Jack White at lock. And someone said to me, oh, yeah, but Horsburgh is so good. And it, Actually, I, I do think Horsburgh is a really good player, but I actually don't think he's the best lock. Like, to me, like, he's a big, very big man. His ball playing is, like, all right, but locks now are, like, slick ball players. Like, you look at Cam Murray... Um, you you watch the the ball that Paddy Carrigan threw last night. To, like they're ball they're ball players now. Now he can ball play, but he ball plays like Junior Paulo. Like it's it's slick for a big man, but it's not that slick. I actually think he'd be better as a prop, like a ball playing prop as a second row, or just coming off the bench as like a super sub for Jackie or something like that. And I, I get what they're saying when they said no, you can't take Horsburgh out of the lock position. I get it because you like it's like. Whoosh, but all's it really going to do is strengthen your bench. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it really that bad having Horsburgh coming on to fresh against tired players? Like, to me, that's almost a bonus. Um, Jackie White and comes out, plays intense, and not because man, he was he he did some of the most brilliant things in this game, and then he did some of the and one of his tries this was just a straightforward pass like and it, it was like a completely neutral party here that pass was forward that he threw that was a try um which so it could have been another wreck for a pass i think they completed three or four sets out of their first 15 like they were really 
and it was good because they were sort of trying stuff, but yeah, it's just like I said, there's nothing wrong with really wrong with what they're doing. They're winning more games than they're losing. That's literally the goal in the in the regular season. But like I said, I'm just looking forward to the finals now. And like I said, I've said it a million times, I'm just looking at a team that's going to get bounced around one or two. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But um, a lot's fallen on this guy's head. Um, Zach Wolford, I think he needs to be better. Um, yeah, and like I said, I, I just I wish they put Jackie in at lock, Corey to the bench, have the two genuine halves in there. Just get Jackie. Just just play footy, bro. Don't you don't have to be a half. Uh, I think it would have been better. Like, it's it's so easy to say now, Captain Hindsight. They did it for one game, and I thought they looked better. They won, but they still didn't win by more than ten points. But I actually thought the team looked better. And again, I'm not saying that necessarily is the right thing to do. I just, like, to me, if they, I don't know, you guys let me know. And I've even had Canberra Raiders fans mess with me and say, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it's, it's shit to say, but, you know, we probably get bounced around one or two if we just keep playing the way we're playing. You know, you, you can't, yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll see, man. I mean, look, to spin a positive on it, Sharky's one game's won a premiership by average in a winning margin of about six points a game as well. So it can be done. So I'm not I'm not writing you off Canberra. But um we'll have to wait and see. I mean look, I'm not gonna sit here and bag the Tigers. I thought like I said, I think they're having a crack. I just don't don't think they're super polished obviously. But I thought Clement was good, 183 running meters, that'll get it done. Um I actually really enjoy watching them play. And this game came right down to the wire. It was good to watch man and yeah, like oh, I actually, like I said, I actually like watching them play. It's good fun. It's good fun. Uh, Laurie was actually pretty damn brilliant in this game. I can't believe they let him go. I, Brooks looked special. Like he looked like a top five half. He was he looked good. Abby Coruscant brilliant. Uh, really really good. We'll have a look at the team stats real quick. I mean Raiders. Yeah, like, like you can't argue, man. Like you're not going to win a premiership with this. You know what I'm saying? And Tiger's completing great. Um, Running meters very similar. They won the post contact battle. Plenty of tackle breaks. I, I like how they at least got the ball out to the edges. Like, you know what I'm saying? They got the ball out to the edges. Defense needs to be better. They let the tight uh, Tigers nearly run for 50 meters a set. But um, great ruck speed from both teams. Um, absolutely brilliant. So that's good. That's a massive improvement for the Raiders. And look, this is the thing. It's so much easier to get the ball out to the edge when you do get a quick play the ball. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, offload seven each. Um, what else we got here? Nothing crazy. Bombs. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they're a bit lucky. Tigers are falling off tackles as well. Um, and missed tackles forty nine to Raiders twenty nine. That's not too bad at all. But yeah, just fourteen errors and then seven penalties conceded. Yeah, look, Raiders are pretty damn lucky that they missed forty nine tackles and gave nine penalties away. It could have been a very different story otherwise because Tigers held on to the ball when they had it. They held on to the ball when they had it, you know. So, I mean, that Raiders had four extra sets and completed five less sets than the Tigers. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. Um, but it uh, looks like uh, poor old Sebastian Chris, who's done a really good job at fullback, has hurt himself too. I mean, Jackie Watt, I mean, again, this is the thing with Jackie. You look at his numbers, 133 running metres from a, from your six is brilliant. You know, nine from nine runs, um, uh, two line breaks, two line break assists and a try assist. You look at these numbers and you go, wow. But yeah, then you, Jesus Christ, you could play a, a blooper reel as well. That would go for about five minutes as well. So um, hopefully Sebastian Chris isn't too injured, but I love I love these numbers from the, from the Raiders, man, 149, 180, 142. Uh, I'd love to a little higher. Um, yeah, uh, they're great. Uh, Big Papa, I thought, was pretty solid too. And I don't know, I feel like Tarpany's slightly down from last year maybe, but, geez, he's probably the best prop in the game last year. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, I think he might have even got one of the Dallium props of the year. I can't remember if it was him or not, but if he didn't, he deserved it. He was absolutely brilliant. But, yeah, look, I mean, Raiders, you've got a few weeks to fix things up. Um, but look, at the end of the day, no one even had you in the finals, but I did. I did. So, <laughs> all right, we're done. All right, let's have a quick look at next week's games. Huge games, huge games. 
All right, Penrith can put the Seagulls out of their misery, um, knock them out completely. Um, Sharkies, Titans, good game for the Sharkies. Titans, are, you know, they're going to put up a good fight and play hard. But, um, you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's not like they have to deal with the Broncos or a Penrith, you know, like they're, you know, they can get build build a bit of confidence on this game if they, you know, if they can get it. You know, Titans will be without a few players as well. I think AJ's out. I think Moe's suspended as well. And I think Tino's still, what, one more week left? Maybe Tino's back this week, I'm not sure. Um, Broncos, Para. I mean, Broncos, I mean, technically, Bronco, Para, you know, like I said, if they go, if they beat, you know, uh, who have they got? Roosters and then Penrith. But, you know, like Broncos can, they can make the Penrith game a must win for the Eels, which it will just pretty much end in their season. Uh, so, yeah, that should be a good one. Like I said, if I was the Broncos, I'd almost rest players for that one. The Parramatta's edges have been so flimsy. Um, Rabbits versus Dragons. Rabbits need to, similar to what I said about Parramatta, Parramatta uh, Rabbits need to win this game well. They need to show me something. They need to show me something. It's just so weird because halfway through the season, they're on top of the ladder and I'm sitting there going, Jesus Christ, Penrith are in trouble here. Rabbitohs look unbeatable. Um, West Tigers versus the Waz. Another big one. So Waz have to come to Australia again. God damn. Um, Roosters, Dolphs, 12th versus 14th. I wonder if Dolphs can get that one. Storm, Storm Raiders. Jeez. For a top four spot, that could be a really good game could be a really good game and then Knights Bulldogs Bulldogs can play a bit of spoiler for the Knights and Cowboys with a much needed rest go to Bali lads go rest up get some beers in you relax don't even think about footy for three or four days that would be my advice to the old Cowboys you've done a really good job to get back in you know you need to, you're gonna need everything to get home you're gonna need everything to get home all right that's it we're done lads thank you all so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one